Hello everyone, Gammon here. Uh, there will be spoilers for the entire first season of the Goblin Slayer anime as well as the manga up to the corresponding chapters. This is your spoiler warning, you've been warned. So, uh, Goblin Slayer, that's, uh, that's still relevant, right? <laughs> uh, what, what, what's that? Uh, everyone is arguing about a different anime? Oh wait, wait, what? I've taken so long to make this video, even that anime isn't relevant anymore? Well, well fuck you, I'm still doing this, okay? I, I, we're all doing this. Together. Anyway, Goblin Slayer got a lot of attention when it first aired, and sadly, for all the wrong reasons, the discussion around it quickly turned into a small culture war with everyone talking past each other, and the actual merits and faults of the work never ended up being discussed. Which I think is really unfortunate because this anime is actually worth thinking and talking about. So uh, that's what we'll be doing, we'll be talking about Goblin Slayer. Uh, so without further ado, let's actually talk about Goblin Slayer and let's start with the first episode. This is the episode that started the controversy and gave Goblin Slayer its infamy. So, at the first chapter of the anime, a series of brutal events happen. Two murders and a rape. Now, personally, while I do think there should have been a content warning to show this show includes, well, sensitive material, you can't blame that on Goblin Slayer. That's on whoever it was that was adapting it. So, um, blame it on Crunchyroll, I guess? And if the criticism of the show had ended there, that there just wasn't a warning, I probably wouldn't have minded as much. But sadly, the usual suspects took to Twitter and started politicizing a show about a dude killing goblins, of all things for fuck's sake, and they started the obvious backlash, and boom, there goes your culture war. Now I'm gonna leave all the politics out of this video because what I want to talk about is the actual work, and in Goblin Slayer is not at all a political show. What I'd like to tackle is the claim that the first episode shouldn't have existed, or that it was uniquely terrible, or served no purpose. Now, in some stories, probably most stories, there is a moment that sets the tone of the show and reframes the story in the mind of the audience. This is a very common technique, and it's been used in multiple genres through multiple mediums. I'm gonna give really minor spoilers for Game of Thrones, Berserk, and 24 uh, right now, by the way. So, in Game of Thrones, a tone setting moment would probably be when Ned Stark dies. The same thing happens in 24 where Terry Bauer, the wife of the protagonist, dies. In Berserk, in the first arc, hell in the first few pages, Guts fucks and then kills a demon, and a few chapters later he gets raped, and generally the whole first arc is just filled with murder and rape and a bunch of really bad stuff. And the reason it's like that is to set a dark tone. Now admittedly in Berserk the dark tone later kind of goes absent for most of the golden age, but it kind of comes back with uh, somewhat of a bang. Now the reason behind these moments is to make the audience view the show in a new light and a new perspective, because now they realize what the show is willing to do, how far it can go. It's why these moments are the ones that are usually brought up when people start talking about the show. It's when the show gets real for a lot of people, and it's also a way of encapsulating the theme of the show. So for instance in Game of Thrones, now that you know that they were willing to kill Ned Stark, who aren't they willing to kill? The same thing goes for uh, 24, once they kill Terry, everyone else is kind of at risk. It makes the characters feel vulnerable and it puts a lot of stress on the viewer. These moments go beyond shock value, beyond the immediate. They stay with the viewer. For the rest of his time watching the show, that moment is going to linger in the back of his mind. And whenever something bad happens or something that relates to that event, it's going to bring back the stress of the event and it's going to make him go, oh no, is that going to happen again? That's the reason for the first episode of Goblin Slayer. It was an attempt to set the tone. And there's nothing wrong with having a show with much darker tones than, well, most people are comfortable with. Now don't get me wrong, if you prefer lighter shows, that's fine. I personally love lighter shows and dark shows. Uh, I don't really care either way so long as there's good writing. However, the concept that shows should never depict a brutal act is... 
it is so wrong-headed it is so limiting and art reflects life horrible things happen in life therefore horrible things must happen in art for it to be of any consequence well not in every piece of art but there has to be the option obviously oh and as a side note the concept that because this is a sensitive subject therefore there should be major consequences if you portray it wrong whatever the fuck that means is also silly people have to practice and some people are going to find themselves attracted to darker themes and want to write stuff now giving people uh, critique giving them constructive criticism that's fucking great like seriously if you see somebody writing a rape scene and, and you think you wrote it badly and you have input by all means but just because he wrote a rape scene badly instead of say a picnic scene badly that doesn't mean you should get any more flack it's just bad writing he doesn't mean to offend you and if you're personally offended just stop watching nobody's forcing you to but the idea that somebody should have some weird ass social stigma because he's not as good of a writer as you'd expect him to be to write the source material that you're watching is uh, it is not good and it's very limiting and it stunts growth and it stunts talent anyway now that we uh, explored why the first episode did what it did let's uh, talk about the merit did it work well so when i saw the first episode i honestly thought the rest of the show would be just as brutal and dark in a way that's the point of setting the tone it's to ready the viewer for what's to come and put his mind in the right state so yes and uh, and no and it's kind of it's 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 complicated let's let's talk about it as anyone that watched through the show will tell you the first episode is significantly darker than anything that comes after it The show never again goes back to that level of desperation and brutality and at times it becomes saccharine sweet. Some of the people that were repulsed by it would probably have been able to stomach the rest of the series since it never again gets to be that dark. A lot of the people that were attracted to it because of the dark themes would probably be disappointed because the show never again got to such a dark place. In general, Goblin Slayer has a very inconsistent tone. wildly inconsistent even so yes it was successful at setting a tone but because the rest of the show never lived up to that moment which is probably one of the reasons each episode of Goblin Slayer ended up getting a lower and lower rating cuz the people who showed up to watch it because of the first episode realized they weren't going to get what they were expecting essentially the first episode set the stage for a completely different type of show having said that the moment still serves a purpose by knowing how far the show can go it puts later scenes of the party facing failure in a very different light and it puts a lot of stress on the viewers as he knows what failure against the goblins means a good example would be the scene where they are fighting against the goblin champion The elf is getting mobbed, the priestess is getting beaten, and Goblin Slayer is on the ground on the verge of death. Now, because the first episode showed us what this can become, that moment becomes a lot more stressful. If the first episode hadn't happened, the sense of fear and trepidation wouldn't exist. And yeah, so yeah, in in many ways the first chapter the first episode are essential this also makes the viewer appreciate the protagonist more when he overcomes and stops the worst case scenario from appearing and when goblin slayer rises and strangles the champion stopping the brutal rapes and murders there's a sense of relief and gratitude towards him so yeah like i said the first episode is both successful and unsuccessful depending on your vote point of view but overall it good <laughs> it good so the episode isn't bad it serves a purpose but it's far from perfect and this is something that will sadly be repeated throughout the rest of this video goblin slayer seems to try to do a lot of things and it's a good hearted attempt at them that usually has a lot of merit and it kind of falls flat on its face most of the time but enough about the story for now Let's continue the video and talk about the visual parts of the show. 
Now the biggest and easiest complaint to make is the CG. Most of the characters in the show are animated by traditional methods, but the protagonist, Goblin Slayer, is very clearly a CG model. This causes a lot of problem. For instance, a lot of scenes lack the impact they had in the manga. Let's compare one scene and watch how it looks in the anime and how it looks in the manga. Now to me, the way it looks in the manga is much more striking. And the reason for this is they went ahead and they stylized Goblin Slayer. They went past the base model. Their unwillingness to go beyond the CG model and give certain moments a unique stylized representation is a real shame, especially when you consider that was done in the manga and that being able to stylize your character in certain important moments is one of the great advantages of animation. Them deciding to use a CG model also made a lot of the animations very, very stiff. It's not berserk bad, but it's bad. Now, if we're going to go with a very charitable interpretation, we can say that the reason they decided to make Goblin Slayer CG is to make him look unique. By making him distinct from the rest of the cast, they're going to subconsciously signal to you that this guy is different from everyone else around him. And actually that can work, assuming the CG isn't so bad, it leapt at you every time you saw it. But if we're going to be slightly less charitable and a little bit more obvious, the more obvious explanation is that they were trying to save money. Either way, the end result ends up being that a lot of the show just isn't visually striking. And even parts that were supposed to be wow moments, or at least portrayed as if they were wow moments, they never really struck me. And to add insult to injury, some scenes are also badly choreographed. One of the biggest advantages anime has over manga is to be able to clearly show movement, where in manga you have to take movement and slice it up and show a part of the movement in each frame, you can show the entire movement in anime, which usually makes battles a lot more clear and a lot more enjoyable to watch. So you'd expect the fights in the anime to look and feel and much better than the manga and be much clearer. And that's not the case. Let's take the battle against the ogre as an example. At first, let's look at the fight from the manga. It's very clear what's happening. The party distracts the ogre, and then the goblin slayer goes behind him and tries to cut his tendons. It's very clear what was happening in that fight. However, in the anime, the moment Goblin Slayer attempts to cut the ogre's tendons is portrayed in such a way that it's actually kind of difficult to understand what it is he's doing and what part he's even aiming at. And to make it even worse, when they zoom in to show the cut healing, they're zooming in too close. This makes it difficult to understand what part of the ogre Goblin Slayer even cut. The action in Goblin Slayer is sadly so poorly choreographed and animated that I can honestly say I liked reading the manga more than watching the action scenes in the anime, and that really should never be the case. There are also a lot of other minor problems. I don't like how long spellcasting takes, especially with the priestess who just recites the same line over and over again like 20 times during the anime. The show also cut out a lot of good content from the manga that has character growth or emotional impact, like showing the backstory of the goblin lord in much more detail. Goblin Slayer telling a joke, uh, the fate of the party that tried to kill the goblins before he showed up at the elven fort, or even small flashbacks they show of the original party before each one is destroyed. Uh, these flashbacks, while very short, add a lot of uh, pungency to the moment and a lot of sadness. It's a real shame because all of these things I talked about are actually good. They're genuinely like. They have value to the story. And cutting this content is even more odd considering how much time the show wastes. Out of 12 episodes, one is wasted by recapping the story, and another is wasted by telling a story that is outside of the manga and doesn't focus on any of the main characters. Goblin Slayer on the whole feels a little bit like a wasted opportunity, like the B version of a different, much better show. Having said that, I don't dislike Goblin Slayer, but I actually really like it. 
Yes, the show has a lot of technical flaws. Its tone fluctuates all over the place. Some of the voice acting is annoying, its use of CG is bad, and it's choreographed in a way that makes me scratch my head. However, if we're willing to pull all of that aside, the story in the show we're left with is oddly heartwarming and really interesting. The show has a lot of small moments filled with personality that I just, I loved. I loved nearly everything that happened between Goblin Slayer and the Priestess. Their mentoring relationship is oddly sweet and filled with mutual trust and appreciation, and this is conveyed in fairly subtle ways. Him giving her the coin, the talk they had after the battle with the Goblin Champion, even something as saccharine sweet as the ice cream, which is usually the kind of thing that will nope me out of a show, I liked. There's something about their chemistry that's just very, very good and engaging. Another part of uh, the show that I liked and shows its real personality is the Sword Maiden. She's a great depiction of PTSD, and I loved the way her story was told. She became this incredibly powerful being, this legendary hero. She was part of a party that defeated a demon lord. But no matter how strong she got, she couldn't defeat her past trauma. Inside, she was always that same scared little girl that got captured by goblins. However, because of her pride, she can't admit that she's scared of something as weak as a goblin, so she's unable to ask for help. It was only through opening up and asking for help that she was able to get over her past trauma. Uh, their conversation, by the way, was translated in a horrible way. Whoever uh, did the subs for this anime is just uh, did not give a fuck. Again, this isn't Goblin Slayer's fault, this is Crunchyroll, I blame Crunchyroll, I guess. It's thankfully much clearer in the manga, but it is another technical problem in an anime that really didn't need another. Anyway, uh, the Goblin Lord and the Goblins are kind of the personification of greed, pettiness, and jealousy. They make excellent villains. The Goblin Lord, like I mentioned, has a slightly more expanded history in the manga, and showing him methodically use people's mercy and sympathy against them, using their kindness against them, really cements how evil a goblin is, and generally how necessary Goblin Slayer is in this world. Hell, I even enjoy the generic side characters and party members, and despite complaining about the animation, the thing they're trying to animate, the thing they're trying to choreograph, is good. I really like how Goblin Slayer uses guile and determination to fight his enemies instead of pure strength. Also, I have to say, I really love the music in this show, I love the opening, I love a lot of the tracks for the battles. So yeah, I really think Goblin Slayer is a show that's worth talking about, and a lot more than its critics give it credit for. And sure, it has its flaws. It has a lot of flaws, but a lot of them are technical and are due to poor adaptation or probably a very low budget. Uh, but behind these flaws, if you can get past them, is a story about a broken man trying to improve the world around him, trying to stop the events that happened to him and happened to his sister to repeat, and the people around him who care about him who are trying to stop him from killing himself, doing what he has to do. It's an oddly small and personal story, which I actually really appreciate, and while I can't say it's a masterpiece or even something I'd recommend most people watch, mainly because of all the technical flaws, I do think you should give it a try, because if you can get past them, if you can just get immersed in the story, there is something about Goblin Slayer that hooked me and will probably maybe hook you. Anyway, that should be enough for now. Thanks for watching.